Hey everybody, today I'm going to be using and reviewing the Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Ascension Twist Adjustable Razor. Stick around. So like I said, today we're going to be using the Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. I have the copper version of the Ascension Twist Adjustable Razor. I've already prepped. So today I just used a few drops of my Cave Beard Oil. Um, just to, just two or three drops rubbed in really, really well. Uh, you don't want you don't want to be oily or anything. It's not a lather uh, additive. It is just to moisturize the skin to protect the skin a little bit. For soap today, I'm going to be using a Franken soap. So this is actually equal parts Tabak, Haslinger Shaft Milch, and Mitchell's wool fat. Uh, so I, I was actually able, I actually won all three of these soaps in a giveaway, and it's kind of a contest on a forum a few months ago. And I've, I've tried each of them individually before, and I, I enjoy all of them. I don't, I don't love the scent of any of them. They're just kind of nice, light, mild, clean, soapy scents, uh, with the exception of the tobacco, which has a little bit of a tobacco floral note to it and I'd seen some posts on some forums about people combining them so I decided to go ahead and do that with these and so I made myself a little franken soap. I've already lathered it up in my captain's choice bowl as you can see really nice lather there. All three of these soaps make good lather on their own so lathered up and combined together, they still make a really great lather. Like I said, the scent on the three soaps individually is very, very light, and that holds true once they're combined. You still get the kind of floral tobacco note of the tabac, uh, but it's it's muted a bit, and. I'll probably do a video on it at some point, but um, it's pretty easy to grate these into a tub like I've done. I use a rotary grater that I picked up on Amazon, and I'll include a link to that in the in the video description. Um, so pretty simple. You just grate it up in a rotary grater, combine it, mix it up well, and press it. I just use my fingers to hand press it into a tub or a bowl or a mug or whatever you want to use to store your soap. So the scent of tabak in particular actually reminds me of my great grandfather's bathroom. My, my great grandpa built a house that my grandpa and my great grandpa, then my grandpa, and now my aunt actually lives in. <clears throat> and it's a single bedroom, um, dining room, kitchen, living room, very small home. Um, so, only being one bathroom, whenever I went in there, you always smelled whatever soaps and shaving products they had been using in there. I don't know if my great grandpa used tabak. I never actually remember seeing it specifically in there. I just know this is what his bathroom smelled like. All right, so we're lathered up. Um, so the Ascension is a twist adjustable razor. It's a dual open comb. So it's an open comb on the base plate and the top cap. And the way the adjustment works is you go ahead and tighten the handle down. You can see on this one, you can kind of see there's a washer um, under the handle. So according to Douglas, that washer gives you a little bit extra adjustability. Uh, you can use it without the washer, but you can't adjust quite as much. So the website, I think, claims you can get up to a quarter turn adjustment. So you start with it tightened. And what I do is I just kind of put my thumb in line and so I can monitor how far I've turned. 
Um, but like I said, according to Doug, with the washer in place, you can actually get about a 90 degree turn of adjustment. Now, uh, sorry, 180 degree turn. Now, I like aggressive razors. And so what I do is I typically loosen it and I just tighten it to the point that I can't really feel it move anymore. And to me, that's tight enough. It's not going anywhere. The blade's not going to move. It's not going to come loose. Um, and that's kind of the highest adjustment point that this will give you. So this is copper. It is CNC milled. Uh, the one I have, I got this summer. It is the matte finish. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll talk more about the razor as I use it. Um, so these are available in a number of different finishes. There's the copper, there's the regular stainless steel, there is the aluminum, which actually has a pretty cool kind of teal colored base plate on it. And there is the new uh, select version that Doug came out with, uh, was it Black Friday maybe? Um, that one has the zinc alloy head and the stainless steel handle that looks similar to the old flare tips that Gillette Gillette made. Uh, so there's, there's quite a few options um, if you're interested in one of these. So the uh, it does feel aggressive at the setting I've got it at right now. I can definitely feel that blade. Uh, they all come with about a three and a half inch handle, which personally is one of my few nitpicks with this razor. I tend to like um, somewhere around three inch handles is my preference. And I wish this came in a slightly shorter handle. Now I suspect I know why Doug offers it in the handle he does. Um, copper's heavy, and so he probably needed a little bit of length on that handle to get the weight, uh, to get the balance where he wanted it. Um, but I will say that because of the geometry of this head and the fact that the blade is curved so much, uh, to me, it makes a longer handle a little bit easier to use because you don't have to you don't have to angle the blade so much to get the uh, you don't have to pull the handle away from your skin quite as much to get the right angle on the blade. So that's actually one of the things I really love about this razor is. I tend to shave at a steeper angle with respect to the head of the razor and its angle to my skin. I tend to shave with the handle closer to my skin as opposed to away from my skin. And this razor makes that a lot easier because of the way it flexes that blade. Now that's actually kind of the genius in this design. So the way that this thing works as far as getting that adjustability and being able to loosen the handle without the razor falling apart is because this razor flexes that blade so much, it uses the blade to act as a spring so it's a really innovative design. And I know that's something that Gillette used to advertise with their old type razors, that you could loosen them up a little bit 
to get a slightly more aggressive shade. So Douglas took that and leveled it up a little bit for this design. Um, I, I first saw this razor, I'm going to freshen up my lather a little bit here. I first saw this razor at the Big Shave Southwest, which may have actually been when he first introduced the copper variation. Um, that was 2019, I believe. And I, I immediately wanted one. Uh, being from Arizona, I love copper. And it was a really, really good price point for a solid copper razor. But I didn't get one immediately because I was worried based on, I, I assumed it would be similar to the um, original double open comb, which is a really, really mild razor. So I was worried this wouldn't have enough efficiency for me. So I held off for a long time and then this summer I finally decided to pull the trigger and buy one and I'm really glad I did. I really do enjoy this razor. Now sometime in the last year Doug changed a couple of things with the copper. So they used to be a polished shiny copper finish. And these new ones are a matte. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it, but they're they're more of a matte. They're still shiny, but um, you can tell they're not high polished the way the original versions were. Um, and I think he did that because the old design included a plating step, <clears throat> and he wasn't able to keep doing it at the same price point with that added plating step. So these new ones are matte. Um, I honestly don't know if I'd rather have a polished version, just because it's been so long since I'd seen one. I will say that the matte copper almost gives kind of a rose gold type hue to the coloring. Uh, but it's still a really beautiful razor. So very efficient, but at its, at its lower settings, if you twist it all the way, the handle all the way closed, it, it's still, I wouldn't call it mild, but it, it makes it more of a medium aggression shaver, probably somewhere in line with a Merker 34C type aggression. So I really, really do enjoy it. I'm glad I pulled the trigger on it. Now the um, blade I'm using in this one right now is a Persona Platinum, Persona Red, which is what I've been using quite a bit in a lot of my razors lately. I've kind of been doing some razor evaluations, so I've tried to uh, keep the blade variable constant. So I've been using the Persona Platinums for most of my shaves recently. Um, one thing about this razor, and I don't know if others have had the same problem or not, um, if you have this razor and you have that problem, leave me a comment and let me know. Um, I, I haven't been able to put a different stainless steel handle on it. So I've tried to put a couple of my handles on it, and it just doesn't feel like it wants to thread properly. And 
I don't want to take the risk of damaging the copper threads with the stainless steel handles. So I haven't forced it, but for me that locks this razor into this handle. Now one of these days I may, I may invest in a slightly shorter copper handle and see if I can't get it to thread properly. But I do know this does not work well with my stainless steel handles. All right, so that's my head shave. Everything went well. No cuts, no nicks, no bumps. Um, the nice thing about this double open comb design, um, one, it leaves a little bit of the lather behind, so it makes it nice for touch-ups. Uh, but the other thing is it rinses really, really easily, so you don't get soap or hairs or anything caught between your blade and your razor. Mm. So this, this soap, if you've never tried Mitchell's wool fat or tabak. Um, they're kind of the two, two of the classic, been around a very long time. Uh, they're what are referred to as triple milled soaps, so they're hard soaps that tend to last a long time. Um, Mitchell's wool fat is one of those kind of uh, oxymoronic soaps. Uh, people, people really either love it or hate it. Um, a lot of people seem to have trouble getting it to lather properly. But those that don't have that problem tend to get really, really fantastic lather out of it. Um, I... Will admit I struggled a little bit when I first had my first puck of Mitchell's wool fat, but I was using badger and boar brushes back then, which never worked for me as well as synthetics. Once I transitioned to synthetics, I didn't really have any problems lathering this anymore. It does produce really nice slick lather. It requires a lot of water. Um, usually when I think I'm done lathering, I keep adding water up for, I don't know, probably two or three more little bits of water into it. Um, because when I think I'm done, I'm not, and it needs a little bit more water. Um, one of the interesting things about this soap is it is one of the soaps that for whatever reason I tend to get a slightly closer shave when I use this soap. I don't know what characteristics are with the soap that make that happen but it does. And like I said, I just felt like doing a little experiment when I decided to grate the three of these together and create my little Franken soap here. And the performance is great. So one of the tips they, that you'll see on a lot of the forums for if you have problems with Mitchell's wool fat is people will suggest grating it into a tub and not lathering straight off the puck. So I have found that to be helpful. And since I grate mine into a tub anyways, I decided to go ahead and run this experiment and grate all three of them. Now we'll move on to the neck. So you can see 
nice dense creamy lather it's not airy it's not overly wet and runny which are kind of the two two things that tend to happen with these triple milled soaps in my opinion when people struggle with them is they will either not use enough soap, which will end up making things bubbly and airy, or they will use too much water, which will end up making it flushed out and runny. So it's, it's Sunday today, and we actually just got done with online church. It was a really good message today uh, for all of you Christians out there watching. Just a reminder to uh, not get angry and yell at people who aren't Christians for acting like they're not Christians. I know I need that reminder sometimes that we can't expect the people who haven't signed up to our way of life to live by the teachings that we believe in. And church online has been interesting. We're now, we're now almost a year since we've been in a physical church building. And our church is open, um, and there are a lot of people who have chosen to attend, but we're in Arizona where the, the numbers are not great, and our hospitals are still feeling the brunt of it, so... We're choosing to kind of do our part by staying at home as much as we can. I trimmed my beard yesterday, so my uh, my beard line here needs a little extra work. Just trying to keep it a little bit longer because I prefer it a little bit longer. But I spent a few days at work this week and ended up with my mustache going up my nose under the mask and things getting tangled and just can't do it yet. Gotta stick to the shorter beard for a while longer. Alright, so that's the end of the shave. I'm going to go shower and we'll see how it, did, how it went. So I'm back. So I finished up my post-shave with a little gentleman, John Allenblock. Uh, this is something I'm adding to my routine. Um, I haven't really used alum for about three years, and it was over drying back then, but since then I've started doing a lot more moisturizer and lotions. Uh, so I decided to try it again. We'll see how it goes. Um, I also used the uh, Master Wellcome Topaz aftershave. I had a sample of this. Um, I might actually pick up some more because so I think it pairs really well with the Tabak. Um, it's got kind of a floral note to it, a musky, uh, very powdery barbershop type thing. Um, so it was a good, good aftershave. So results with the Ascension Twist Double Open Comb. Um, really, really good. So I didn't have any sting with the Allen block, so no irritation. Um, the, the results, it's, it's really, really a good shave. Probably not as close as the R41 or the Z-Knot razors that I've been using in my last couple of videos, um, but still really, really close, really, really good. Um, 
one of one of my favorite razors. I really really love the copper. Um, you can find these. Um, I'll put a link in the website below to all the various Ascension Twist razors. Uh, the the big problem with them is he tends to do drops, um, so he doesn't always have them in stock. The easiest way to get one when they do come in stock is to sign up for his uh, email list so that you'll get notified as soon as they get back in. That's how I that's how I ended up with this one. So for soap again we used my uh, Franken soap with Tabak, Haslinger and Mitchell's wool fat and didn't mention the brush at the beginning of the video but this is a Wild West brush works handle a uh, jade faux jade handle uh, with a Magger 26 millimeter synthetic knot. And I'm going to finish off with some Sterling Balm. Uh, hope you guys had a great weekend and we'll see you next time.